So my name is Ronnie Dan, and I do ideation and uh, uh, product management inception within Team Six, which, as you know, is organizing this um, hackathon. Very pleased to be here. Uh, you know, talk to you guys, get a chance to talk to you guys. And unfortunately, I can't do so in French, but uh, you'll forgive me. And um, and really, just take a quick 10, 15 minutes to share some ideas to get your kind of minds going about. Uh, you know, things that might be interesting to explore during the hackathon. By no means you're obligated to select any of these ideas or, or concepts that are just there to show you really kind of how we're trying to think about uh, things in the context of the Internet of uh, Things or the Internet of Everything, as we like to call it in Cisco. Um, and, uh, and hopefully kind of get your minds going in the, in the right direction. So um, I'm not going to give you a whole uh, much background about myself, but uh, one of the last projects that I've been working on is uh, Flare, which you've heard uh, about a little earlier from uh, Olivier, uh, and we're really looking forward to uh, hopefully get you guys to uh, to you know uh, get your hands dirty with it. So the Internet of Things is is a lot of times about unlocking the value of machine to machine. Right, the uh, uh, traffic lights uh, connected to the city to, uh, and the cars reporting their position and therefore you could do smart things with traffic lights. Right, so machine to machine and a lot of the value within the Internet of Things, which is this huge thinking space, um, is, is related uh, to that. And with Flare, which has kind of been the focal point uh, for me within the context of IO in the last uh, few months, um, it's really trying to uh, take into consideration that it's not just machine to machine, but machine to machine to me. There, there are going to be many connected devices in, around us in smart cities and everywhere else in our work lives, in our personal lives, and uh, it's going to require a lot of uh, interaction between machine and, and people as well. And so in, in those examples that I'm going to give you, I'm going to be quite uh, people-centric or human-centric in the context of Internet of Things. So we're very short on time, so I'm going to jump right into it and just splash a few uh, ideas out. I'm actually going to go to start with number four. This one is a little bit about kind of smart smart shopping. And uh, with hopefully at least a, 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 an initial idea of what Flare is all about and uh, what you can do uh, with it, this is hopefully something interesting to get your minds uh, going. Uh, so in the world of retail, which has been um, kind of a focus area for us, uh, one of the focus areas for us uh, with, uh, with Flare, uh, there is a phenomenon called showrooming, which is not good for retailers. Showrooming, you might be familiar with it, is this uh, huge phenomenon which is costing billions to retailers, uh, where people go, would go to a physical store to uh, actually uh, look and feel and examine merchandise or a product that they are considering to purchase, but then at the end of the day, they're actually going to buy it online, mostly because it's cheaper, obviously. Uh, but that's, uh, and that's called showrooming. That is making re physical retail stores basically no more than showrooms, right? So you go there, you see the product, but you end up buying it uh, um, online. And so thinking about Flare and what Flare can do and uh, the, the kind of uh, retail uh, vertical, which is not directly but definitely uh, a big part of any city life, right? The retail commerce is a huge part of, uh, of, of, of smart cities as well or any city. Uh, and so we were thinking, uh, trying to think of a way to combat, to countermeasure this showrooming phenomenon, which is, as I said, costing retailers billions. And so... One, one thing that we thought we might be able to do is, so in the world of Flare, your PC, when you are sitting in front of your PC and browsing, uh, you know, uh, uh, an e-commerce site like Amazon.com is also a thing, which in the world of Flare, if you put your arm up, right, like you do with Flare, it would then, of course, recognize that you are in front of your PC and would give you one of these uh, fins, as we call them, that is pointing up to your PC, but this fin is a bit unique. It not only recognizes or is supposed to recognize that uh, you're in front of your PC and uh, you might want to relate to your PC as a thing, but it actually uh, would have awareness uh, of the web page and the actual item that you are uh, viewing on Amazon.com in this case, right, and, 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 and an online retailer. 
And so if you then swipe that fin, you know, into your uh, smartwatch as you would with Flare, what you would actually ingest would be the, the, the product information that you were browsing on Amazon.com in this case. So as you can see on the left-hand side, let me put my cursor on, hopefully you can see this. Um, I've just, you know, pointed at my PC with Flare and ingested the, the price of the product that I'm considering to buy. And from this point on, it's like in my little Flare belly, all right? It's there, it remembers it, although I, I probably forget about it for a couple of days, right? But then uh, I might happen to be, uh, you know, shopping uh, out and about with my wife or myself, uh, and I would go into a physical store, and I would see the same product right there in front of me, right? The same product that I was considering to buy um, on, on Amazon, right, that I was researching. Um, and, uh, you know, I would swipe it in because I can. In the world of Flare, uh, you have this, this awareness for product, as you saw in the, I think you only showed you in the um, kind of retail example that he, that he talked about. So you pull, pull the, the, the price in, and you see that it's obviously more expensive than Amazon.com. But what that then gives the, the, the retailer, the physical uh, retailer, the opportunity is to actually bid for your business right then and there when you are in front of the product that you are obviously considering to buy, right? So whereas before you're just a lost deal and the retailer would have no awareness of you interested in a product that they actually carry in store, now because you have this very easy, very intuitive, accessible way of checking information, in this case product information using Flair, as you can see in the next two little examples there, uh, what it allows you to, the retailer to do, it would trigger like a bidding, a real-time bidding uh, process where the retailer could, if he so chooses, he might not want to do it, but it at least has the opportunity to do it, he could match or undercut the Amazon price. So as you can see, what we're trying to do is basically take this uh, nasty phenomena. Well, nasty is, uh, is depends on your perspective. If you're a retailer, showrooming is a bad thing. Basically kind of take it and turn it on its head, right? So basically allow you to use online outlets such as Amazon.com or any other out, uh, online outlet as the showroom piece where you research, you would research a product, but then if you happen to see that product or be in the presence of that product at retail, give the, the, the retailer the opportunity to successfully bid for, for your business. So, uh, and, and by the way, the, the, the absolute key, we think, um, uh, to be able to do this is because we believe that checking out product prices using something like Flare and, and ingesting uh, uh, product uh, pricing and other information off an online website has to be uh, completely frictionless. It has to be so easy, so accessible, uh, like we believe Flare uh, enables, something like Flare enables, that you would make a habit of using it. It needs to be very, very easy to do. So very quickly, being mindful of time, just a quick idea of how you could use Flare to combat uh, showrooming. So I'm going to jump now all the way to the top, and quickly talk to you about something relating to that. So Flare, at the heart of Flare, uh, there's this idea that uh, the system, Flare, is aware of your location pretty accurately within, you know, a given space. It doesn't, doesn't matter if it's a store or it's a hospital or it's a, a, an airport or a city hall or whatever it may be, right? Uh, once we know, once the system knows where you are, it's then able, able to drive the Flare experience on, on, on the smartwatch as you've, as you've seen it before. Now, that, in order to pinpoint the location of a person in this case, a person wearing a smartwatch in a given space, uh, you would have to have some kind of technology to do it. So in the POC that we've developed for Flare, we've done it with uh, Bluetooth uh, beacons. You probably also heard about CMX, which is a Cisco existing product that allows you to uh, would allow you to do very much of the same thing, pinpoint the location of someone wearing a phone or a smartwatch within a given space. But what we, um, you know, were thinking is whether that could be done without, with, without the need to deploy any of those uh, active or semi-active sensors in a given space. Because obviously if you go to Ikea or you go to any other given space and you say, well, 
uh, here you go, Flare is a fantastic thing. Would you like to have that in your in the context of your business or your service? And they would go, yes, we love it, we want it. Uh, but then, of course, that would entail deploying, uh, you know, uh, beacons or CMX or anything of that sort. So wouldn't it be great if you could actually do in indoor location services, um, you know, without uh, requiring uh, all that? And so uh, this idea, which we call Coyote, which has nothing to do, I understand that in France there's a GPS-related uh, uh, piece of technology called Coyote. This has nothing to do with it. It's just a funny name that I came up with to, to kind of uh, refer to this. And so is there, could there be a way to do indoor services, pinpoint my location in a given space with no sensors, right? And so we think that there might, and this is uh, speculative, right? We haven't done this. This is just an idea. Um, you might be able to do so if you can pinpoint two uh, known, known landmarks, two objects in your vicinity, in your line of sight, uh, the, wherever you may be, right? Uh, and uh, combined with the fact that we know where the north is because we have compasses in these devices, we could then triangulate uh, somebody's location. So to make it a bit more real, again, putting it back into the context of of retail, so this is a kind of an IKEA store, right? You see uh, two these two things hanging in there, and kind of using reverse, but the kind of very similar flare mechanics. You could just raise your hand, right, and push those those fins. So those fins don't know where these objects in front of you are, okay? But basically, if you just push those fins to roughly uh, pinpoint the uh, the angle using that angle, okay and the, the uh, compass uh, on these devices and the fact that these two objects are known to the system, we think that there might be a, a, a good chance that we can fairly accurately pinpoint one location uh, in a given space. And once you do that, right, so imagine me walking into a store, uh, I want to get the flare experience, I want to uh, I'm getting into a hospital and I want to get some directions how to get from A to B. All I need to do is raise my gaze, see if I can uh, recognize two of these uh, objects, reference objects, raise my hand, do a little swipe on my watch, and it would then, you know, know my, my location and drive, you know, a navigation, an indoor navigation, or something like uh, more complicated like a flare experience, no matter where I am, without me having to deploy uh, and semi-active technologies to pinpoint my location. I think we're just about running out of time. There are more ideas that I, that, uh, I wanted to talk to you, but uh, I don't think we have time to do it right now. So I'm going to leave it with this. Hopefully it gives you just a little bit of the, of, of the spread of uh, things that might be possible to do with something like Flare and Flare Mechanics. I'll be uh, more than happy to see you guys in a few days' time and share other ideas that we have. More importantly, hear what you guys uh, might come up with and want to do with something like Flare in the context of smart cities and IoT, and uh, personally uh, looking forward to it. So thank you very much for coming out today, and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in a few days' time. Thanks.